Hi everyone. I can see a lot of you are watching now. Hi everyone. So uh, let's just start with a brief uh, checkup with you guys. How are you all doing? Just put it up in the chat window. Who all are there? How is 2020 going? Hi Sachin. Guys, don't be shy. Just put in your names. I need to know. How are you guys doing? T20 is like a test match not coming to an end. Not a fan of cricket, but yes. It does seem like that. Hi, Hitika. How are you? Some more members have joined. Please introduce yourself on the chat.
Hi, hi, Simran. Yes, totally. Learning and growing. Okay, so we'll wait just for five more minutes and then uh, we'll just start the event. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, you guys just uh, post it on uh, the chat. And uh, once the event uh, is at the Q&A end, We'll just pick up your questions and uh, just Jeet might uh, pick up them for answering.
okay so we have around 11 people currently watching the live stream so we can start the event Okay, so welcome everyone. Today's uh, speaker we have with us, uh, Jasjeet. He has previously spoken with us uh, as a part of uh, collaboration between OLX Group and uh, Product Tank Delhi. Uh, today we are again back with uh, him on a very interesting topic which uh, suits current needs of the product as well as it's a future forward approach towards how we uh, can change design and uh, product thinking to take into account uh, the unknowns that we have. Uh, but before we get into our current talks, let me uh, just give a brief introduction to Product Tank. I'm sure all of you must know about it, but let's just have. So Product Tank started uh, eight years ago in London, and it is a uh, A part of Mind the Product uh, Umbrella Company. We have a lot of events uh, across the globe. This is the tribe for product managers, and uh, we have the product events currently across 200 cities with more than 25,000 subscribers in our uh, newsletter and uh, more than 15,000 members, which are increasing day in and day out. Now, a little bit about Jasjeet. Uh, Jasjeet leads product for uh, dealer experiences and platform monetization for OLX markets across the globe. Uh, before this, Jasjeet uh, led MobiWiki and he has also led Wink Music as a director of product. He was also instrumental in building up a mobile platform in Nimbus, which is a very, very uh, if you are in, in, uh, in the 90s, so it was a platform wherein all the chats came together to form an aggregator uh, sort of a thing. And he's also into advertising service for uh, BlackBerry. Jasjeet graduated from Georgia Tech in uh, human computer interaction and has been a vocal advocate of user centric design. And he has been responsible for product development and uh, building products and creating impacts at scale. So, uh, Jasjeet, over to you. Hey, guys. Uh, so, uh, it's so very nice to come back to Product Tank and uh, do this session. Of course, I would have loved it if, if it, it were a real uh, real world inter interaction between me and the people. But like, like, let's make the best of what we have. And uh, today, I'll be taking you through like what uh, Shreya mentioned. And uh, Shreya, thank, thanks a lot for hosting me today and uh, I, I think I hope uh, this session is fruitful, useful for people who are uh, watching uh, watching this right now or maybe even after. Uh, let me share my screen and then we can start this journey. Just a second. Uh, I, it seems that uh, just give me a moment. I think I need to re-log in because this is an incognito zone and I can't add a connection extension. Just a second. I'll be back.
cool so sorry for the for the disruption uh, let me start uh, sharing my screen now Just a second. Otherwise, how how are things in, uh, uh, with you guys, right? Uh, it, how, how how are things uh, going on with with the regular work or and the things that you are currently doing? Are there some interesting opportunities or problems that you've recently figured uh, and you need some answers on that? Like, is there something happening over there? Uh, I can see some comments now. Okay, <laughs> cool. So I am back and let me. Present. Cool. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Cool. So, um, welcome, guys. Welcome to Product Tank. And uh, as they say, right, uh, whatever. Can go wrong, will go wrong, right? And that's usually what happens when uh, uh, when you are into some demo or presentation. Uh, unfortunately, it happened with me, but hopefully, like as we go forward, this would this would this should be something that you would really love. So let's come back to the topic. The topic is uh, bouncing back in the pandemic and uh, build it. So it's all about building safe experiences, right? So when you talk about pandemic or or things like that, right? The first thing that comes is the stress, right? So we'll be talking about human behavior. We'll be talking about how do you address that human behavior? How do you move from behavioral analysis to basically product design? So that's that's the journey I will be taking through. So let's let's start that journey. So who am I? I am just she. And uh, so uh, I, I think Shreya did a very good job of kind of uh, taking you through like what what I have done over the years. But I think for the most part, I am a experiment or a, or a learner for life. And uh, let's go further. So in this, uh, I, I think what I will need is that uh, I, when I go through this uh, video, it's a short five minute video. I want you to comment on the kind of stresses that you see over here, right? Well, so something like physical, financial, all those kind of stress that you see in this video. So let, let's go through this and then let's come back. And uh, I, I would love to see the comments uh, to see what what do you what did you find out in this video? Right. So let's start this. As the coronavirus infection is spreading and risking the lives of people globally, it has also created a deep economic distress. As some businesses struggle to stay afloat, most Indian companies will see their revenue and profits getting impacted amid the COVID-19 pandemic. But the impact will be different across sectors as the country eases lockdown in some parts. Even with a sufficient stimulus package, if only partial uplifting of the lockdown is done till mid-May, it will put at least 32 million jobs at risk in India as per a report by McKinsey and Company. It says the cost of stabilizing and protecting households, companies and lenders could exceed $130 billion. In case of a second wave or more lockdowns, the impact will be even deeper. In terms of sectors, the aviation sector is the hardest hit, while pharma and IT companies are in a better position. But this aviation slump has a direct impact on Indian IT companies and could mean 1-7% to drop in revenues in the coming quarters, as per experts. The hotel industry has also seen a major disruption after the aviation sector. 
hotel industry revenue is likely to fall by rupees 90000 crore in 2020 due to covid-19 impact auto and advanced industries will be next in line with no near term relief to the sector for the first time ever india set to report zero automotive sales in april and the sector is unlikely to have a respite anytime soon It is important to note that the Q1 consumption could drop by more than 30% in discretionary categories like textile and furnishings. Construction, real estate and textile industry are majorly hit if we compare it to the same quarter of the previous year. As per Money Control's Vandana Ramnani, luxury housing may see a 20% reduction in prices while developers are likely to offer freebies to buyers investing in the mid segment. food and utility sector is estimated to not see a fall in consumption by more than 10% if the current scenario plays out so largely strained debt to service ratio is anticipated in the travel and transport industry which includes logistics along with the hotel and entertainment industries like movie theaters the fall in the crude prices in the past week also hint at weakened demand in the energy segments Global energy demand could slump by 6% in 2020 due to the lockdown restrictions in what would be the largest contraction on record as per the International Energy Agency. As Indian consumers are expected to spend cautiously this year, consumer and retail segment is also anticipated to be soft. All the less, chemical and agricultural sectors can also see a drop in the quarterly output. but pharmaceuticals it and telecommunications are relatively strong sectors as the lockdown has thrown up some unprecedented challenges the pharma sector is better placed to navigate the coronavirus outbreak as per brokerages the report also estimates that almost 25% of msme and small and medium sized enterprise sme loans can turn bad the corporate sector might see a 6% default rate with sectors like aviation textiles power and construction showing a higher rate with around 3% default in the retail segment with layoffs and pay cuts seen in the aviation and other segments following will be the causes of concerns after the pandemic is over unemployment liquidity risk and business risk in addition to the announced stimulus packages mckinsey suggests a large stabilization package to contain the problem of a magnitude like this types of people cool so so what did we figure out i think there yeah, there were some good comments on the different kind of stresses that stress that we see of course there is a, a job security like not being there you never know what what would happen with your jobs going forward right uh, we we don't know uh, that we we know that for sure that the demand is dropping right because people are not consuming as much as they would have done normally we know that there is there is this financial insecurity that i don't know if i when when i if this extends for a longer period of time what will be my financial status how will that change right and, and then there and then of course as uh, lakshmi has pointed out uh, it's also a consumer behavioral shift so that that's a very interesting point right uh, consumer behavior shift so why do behaviors change right why why is it uh, so if you ask again right why is it that the behaviors are changing i think that is what we would Uh, go deeper in the, in this uh, presentation so let's go to the next step so now we have a, a kind of context on what are the various kind of stresses that are happening now let's from what i saw i saw these right one is physical stress right where wherein now you we are very 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 unsure of physical world i don't want to go out i don't want to be in a physical place common public place right i want us i want my family and my fam, uh, and friends to be safe right the engagement that i had the whole the, the whole premise of economy was that okay people do come out they go eat out uh, travel all those things are no longer a reality right so it it also puts it into my mind yeah that this is a physical constraint that i have to live with right emotionally So I think if you look at the whole journey, right, it, it is a little bit sad kind of an environment wherein, like, you you are unsafe, right? You 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 feel that you are vulnerable, right? Vulnerability is of unknown, right? You you 
people who have not fortunately who have not been uh, uh, affected by this virus they, even they are in, they are impacted day in day out thinking about what if i get that virus right what if what if my someone in my family gets sick right so that emotionally draining kind of a thing is, is with everyone right and not only so again not only with with people but like when you look at industries everywhere that emotional insecurity is also there in addition to that of course financial right so when you talk about financial simply because that now the your activity your your if you look at a daily activity cycle of a person right there were a lot of physical social elements that were happening and that social those social elements were reflected into financial outcomes right it's interactions or basically buying new stuff selling new stuff right all of a sudden all of that because of your constraints you are no longer doing the same kind of a thing and hence low economic activities are there and hence people are forced to kind of scale down businesses and when this all comes together then the the, the next thing comes is men mentally when people it, it is a negative sentiment right everywhere you see every every morning when you wake up right what is what is, what is the first thing that you see right how many people dead how many people infected so this this is actually having a very negative impact on how we see the world and is actually leading to a lot of cases where where people are getting more sick in terms of mental sickness and, and is a very big problem right now right so i think what what why and when you look a level deeper right why are these problems happening right why 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 do all this happen right so because we human nature is to feel safe in things that we know right as soon as we are set into an environment that is unknown we feel super unsafe right and, and that is what exactly is happening the environments have, have changed right is there is this new normal and to adapt to that normal there are various unknowns that we need to identify figure out to be more comfortable in this space right so that's the overall construct of what happens during the pandemic so when you talk about pandemics right the 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 other element to this is human right this is this is the social angle of the whole uh, of the whole premise and but in this social angle there is the human part of it right that's the next part right in this the center of this is the human brain right and human brain is neuroplastic what does it mean neuroplastic that we rewire right we we change our behaviors we we shift our as as uh, lakshmi was talking about consumer behavior shift that behavior shift is basically the neuroplasticity that we have that over a period of time and if we are thrown into a circumstance or a situation which needs us to adapt we adapt we rewire our brain and then that becomes a new normal right so so that those are the things that are very crucial from a product design perspective because until unless you understand the underlying behavior underlying currents of what a human mind thinks you will not be able to design around it right so so that is where it becomes very important to first identify and dissect what are the behaviors that will stick what are the behaviors that will not stick on once the situation comes back uh, to a, re a, re a decent shape or form they will go away right so that you can build experiences on the on the things that would stick right so from that point of view uh, when you look back into the physical emotional financial and mental uh, paradigms then people uh, so if tomorrow say tomorrow there is a news uh in uh, in your, in your newspaper right hopefully which says that the, the the pandemic is over right so there is no corona virus you're all free right what what is it that people will experience right one half of the half of us would say yes let's go out party do whatever we had we were doing previously but the other half will be cautious right what if it is wrong right what if this is just a temporary break right so so those are the things that go into that that mental model that that basically is like even after the th things are have gone it will take time for people to recover and go back to the normal activities and hence when you talk about physical people will still be cautious about going out emotionally even though like now you will have people around but the first sneeze or the first cough people will go crazy right so i, I have actually seen this right 
a, a person right now was walking just across the road and he he sneezed right i could see everyone running left right and center as though some some something like it was devastating right I, I, the experience was really bad so that's how the, we we respond to situations right physically and financially also right i think what we have seen in that video is the the amount of losses is huge huge right and these losses like they will not come as soon as the virus virus goes away it is not that everything will be back to normal on day zero right that that recovery itself is, is the whole the whole supply chains have been broken right so now all those supply chains have to come back right and even in terms of mental uh, i i think that that security sense of security will have to come in so from understanding the pandemic to understanding the social paradigm to understanding the human brain right so now we have taken it into three levels so now we'll will basically take what, what the learning from this and see how what we can do in product and design so that we map into these paradigms and build experiences that are safe and then when when you look at this right so when then the question comes right okay this is all perfect right you 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 talked about a lot of pandemic human brain everything makes sense but why should i as a product manager or a ux designer care right why why, why does it make my life any different like i was doing x y z i will continue to do x y and z right why why how does it change my life so i think that is the question which i when i was thinking this i thought about like there are connections right there are connections behavior between behavior experiences and ux design and product design so so that's what i will kind of try to bring out over here from a behavior lens right a human mind feels safe when when it observes things consistently right every time when you come back to your home you see things as they were when you left right so you feel safe right this is this is my place right similarly now what what happens is that now all of a sudden this this gets shaken up right this gets shaken up and there are a lot of unknowns in this place and wherever there are unknowns there is a fear right and fear is in a very short span of time it transforms behaviors it transforms how we look at world how we interact with world and it those behaviors then define the new normal so that is from a behavioral lens from a product design lens we as a product guys or the ux designers we define experiences right and ex these experiences provide value but these experiences are actually reflections of behavior so the closer you are to a behavior the better your your experience adds value to the customer right so with that lens what we know is that we care because experiences reflecting the new behaviors lead to better adoption and scale right and that is this is the, the this is the the hidden gem or the secret sauce that why and how you could build in your bouncing back with the things that you are planning right so again can you create experiences that reflect the new behaviors that make them make the user comfortable and which helps in adoption and scale of your value proposition so that's the whole journey of from a, a social setting to a human mind to to basically joining the dots and looking at the bigger picture of what is it that you can do to be able to add value and so that it becomes better in adoption and scale so having said that i think this is still at about 40000 feet right so as we go further i'll i'll go i'm going from a high level view to a top from a high level view to a bottom level view to actually understand what exactly needs to be done to make more impact so now now we know that why do we care let's go next further into the next level which is a little bit of gyan that now since we are talking about a chaotic environment right there is also an opportunity over here and and this is something that this is a mindset mind uh, mindset shift right can you think can you not be overwhelmed by situations but can you think of it as a short term short term avenue wherein you you have an opportunity to make bigger impacts right so so think that so so the first thing that you do is change that mindset a bit from 
a negative to a positive and once you change that you, your lens changes and that is where you start looking at opportunities in this whole paradigm of society human mind and how what are the what are the products in between that are delivering that value to the customers so what does it mean so again like i have uh, when i was looking at some of the literatures around uh, on this topic almost everyone talked about how do we want to reconfigure how do we want to realign how on, how do we want to retarget our story so that it reflects the new realities but i when, when i looked at it I, from my perspective i think when you look at these topics you look at what are what is it that you can do in short term what is it that you could do in the medium term what is it that you can do in the longer term right and i will tell you the olx story in this that what is it that we did to be able to reflect all those points that i talked about so let, let's go to this so first is the short term vision short term is like you are in the middle you are in the eye of a storm and when you are at the eye of the storm all that matters is whoever is your highly paid user or a highly retained user on whom you have invested a lot right whose lifetime value is high and and, and again then comes and then it comes down to the uh, realm of how do you define a user how do you define the lifetime value of a user so but at this juncture the your most paid user or the highly retained user is the something where you have invested a lot and you would hate this user to go away from your platform due to any of the stresses that you have right so your first task is trying and to understand what are the stresses that you have especially for your core niche that is your highly paid highly retained user or the paid user so monetization or the pay, pay, paying user is the holy truth right because what happens is that if you are willing to pay you you understand the value and you are basically willing to pay for it right so that 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 relationship is something that is very strong but you need to understand why is it a paid user or a highly retained user is not coming back onto the platform what are the challenges how do you solve for it because you, that is your core the second is I, i think it is not just about launching product features think it end to end right think it end to end how do you come into the journey how do you pro provide value how do you how do you communicate that value how, how do you have the processes around it to reflect the current realities and the third is of course that can, can you can you basically again like th this is just a recap of the first two points and wherein you actually go back to the users and kind of understand the new context better so when in terms of olx i think that journey started as soon as like we went into this lockdown phase i think the first thing that we did was that for our paid users we extended all the packages that were there so that we knew that they were under a lot of financial stress they were a lot of a, a lot of uh, going down business going down a lot uh, for them so that is why we we started offering that we will we will not be charging for any of the packages that you have bought and we'll be extending the packages and also providing freebies uh, that that was there but we also figured out that it is not just about uh, uh, so again like over period of time olx has also like kind of uh, pivoted towards uh, uh, cards and there we saw that the especially in the dealer sections uh, a lot of inventory is there uh, and uh, they are not able to sell it right so and some of the other problems that they were that uh, from a liquidity point of view they they are very they were very short changed right so so that is where we looked at one uh, from can we fund offer uh, sanitization as a service to for the car dealers or people who are uh, who really like who are impacted by this so so sanitization became one of the core cornerstone we also looked at like can we offer uh, can we uh, can we start offering financing to the to the dealers i think that that is an initiative that has uh, started recently in india and uh, we are also experimenting with other markets and that that got us to kind of understand the pain points and quickly react to situations so that uh, our core user base and our core users uh, and the core use cases that we offer are protected and we, there is that that 
that feeling that this company is with you right that empathy is with with the user so i think th those are the short term things wherein like you need to elevate stresses by offering those kind of a things that add value in the short term but this is not just a short term game right it is not just that you do this tomorrow things go back to normal you forget right that is where the whole journey starts and that is the medium term right now what will happen is you've offered th there was a certain behavior before pandemic you offered some offerings because of that and the other situation outside the environment there are certain behavior changes right and now can as i was talking about earlier about a human mind where there would be certain behaviors that stick certain behaviors that don't stick so over a period of time you start measuring changes right how is the user doing the same sort of things that he was doing pre migration pre pre pandemic or not and then basically observe the behaviors right and the also the good indicator is how good is your bounce back rate so uh, uh, I, i think what we have seen at least in olex that things are getting back to normal really really um, welcoming changes that uh, that we are seeing right now but this is very important to note that how uh, how much of the traffic is coming back right what are the users who are not using why are they not using and or have they shifted to something else or are we not are we relevant in this scheme of things or not so all those questions are something that your problem opportunity hypothesis should have in addition to that i think uh, usually what happens is that product people we we think of a medium to long term road map right of this is where we want to go what i would encourage now is that cross validate this road map with what are the current realities and is it making sense or not so it is more of a course correction that basically helps you renavigate to and align to the new story but this is not this is not all right so one you did short term uh, short term painkillers right then you looked at medium term vitamins but add to really put steroids into your whole growth story back right so that for that you need a long term plan so the long term plan is that in this changing environment what is your pivot right what is it what is it that is core to your user what is that core to the core to the product and do we need to change that pivot right so so for example like if if you are say the zomatos of the world or uh, or swiggies of the world right so the question there would be that is maybe hyper local delivery of groceries is that the new reality right is that something that people are comfortable with so those kind of things that that over a period of time you have observed a lot of behavior but now can you start validating and seeing that is it making sense in a long term strategy to pivot to something that is more relevant now even more relevant now than it was earlier and of course like while while you were designing your short term and medium term vision what are the unit economics right how do you scale with this and is is there an opportunity for you to go into some uncharted territories a lot of people are doing experiments these days right some of these experiments like for example bake my trip is selling uh, uh, they, they were into groceries or something like that right so you would never imagine right why would make my trip go into that space right but but the the reality is that everyone is experimenting everyone is going out of their comfort zone just to figure out is there a niche where i can pivot which is more sustainable gives me more benefit and builds a better relationship with the customer so that tomorrow when this thing goes away there is that recall in the user's mind that this brand was with me when i needed the most right so so those are the things that you should be uh, basically allocating in short and medium term but over a longer term start analyzing that and start pivoting towards things that working that are working for you right and then of course create new opportunities and double down on those opportunities which you think are making sense and kill the other ones so that's how like some of this could be done of realigning reconfiguring and retargeting your story so now from from a social uh, paradigm to a human mind to 
creating the the short medium long term of how do you create those things now we come to safety of zoom so safety zone for users i think uh, as we as we went through this previously as well right so it, it's it, it's about how how safe can a user feel in his experience and how can you provide that experience right so in my mind i think i have seen at least three three versions if they are more like let's i would i would love to hear from you the so one is of course the elevating the stress through solutions uh, removing distractions and offering choices that give more control to the situation so that's how we create that safety bubble in which people can feel more safe transact more and become more part of that experience so the over, overall idea is how do you create those safe experiences in your product and design and when when you come to this right uh, I, i think what does what does that what does that thing that really enables you to create a safe experience I, I, this is uh, so recently jenny herald uh, from uh, gtm hub uh, she was there in olx and uh, she was presenting uh, uh, basically the okr planning in covid era where she talked about this framework from mckinsey which is basically a shape framework but essentially when you look into the like the deeper meaning of this this really like stuck to me that this is this is actually making a lot of sense in the current ways of working right so shape is s stands for startup mindset so in this time right it is very easy for us to go into analysis paralysis where we think a lot should we do this should we not do this what will the brand uh, brand communication look like how will this work how will that work right so one thing i've seen across industry uh, as we as, as we are going through this paradigm is that a lot of action bias is already there right from zomato paytm olx ola every uber everyone is trying to do more actions experiment more learn from it and then iterate on things that work well so i think that is very important the second is i think uh, in an organization to be able to reflect that startup mindset a regular cadence or a rhythm of communication needs to start so that like everyone is on the same page that was these are the actions that we want to do and these are the hypotheses these are the results and this is what uh, this is what i want to experiment with and this is my success criteria simple all the communication that happens is in terms of uh, in terms of experiment design which really enables you to be able to learn more about the user behavior and hence change the whole paradigm the second is human at the core which is your your human centric computing hcc is on steroids right so wherein you place the human in the middle and start thinking about what are the core problems that he faces in a day of a life and how do you solve those problems how do you understand how big are those problems and can we do cheap experiments to be able to do fast and quick validations that these indeed are problems and hence should we should we go after them and the next is acceleration of data, digital tech and uh, analytics in the startup world this is already solved right like where in a lot of this has happening but in structured bigger companies a, a lot of things which are not digital are not technical or are not analytical oriented i think a lot of acceleration needs to happen over there and at the end of the day the purpose of why we are doing this for the customer should be very clear which helps in creating an ecosystem and adaptability of that ecosystem so that's so, so it's a overall starting from a action bias to thinking about a user and then enabling that whole experience with technology so that you are able to understand human behavior reflect on it and uh, kind of create experiences fast quickly into the into the market receive feedback and iterate so this whole paradigm is is basically through this shape framework but it still is at 10000 feet right so we started off from 50000 feet now we have reached to 10000 feet right like we now we are going deeper 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 into what does it mean for our product and a technology so next we will be going to the ground wherein we look at 
how does how do you execute this while you are building product experiences while you are creating user experiences right so where do you think you spend the most amount of time in this whole in this whole development cycle in this whole from clear need to research observe prioritize brainstorm hypothesis experiment revise hypothesis build it and then feedback loop the biggest place where with the place where you're spending the most amount of time is building it right so so again if you were to you if you were to be able to successfully execute shape you need to execute fast and quickly right and for that executing fast and quickly doesn't mean that you do everything in the sky but doing it faster it also means thinking about what are the problems what are the problems that will give impact right which is your problem framing or reframing spend as much time as you can possibly can in understanding what are the pain points what are the problems that a user is facing so that you have a good rich list of problem hypothesis so some of the frameworks like jobs to be done amazing uh, opportunities for you to be able to build up that jobs pain points and outcomes and hence build the problem opportunity hypothesis over there so that is where you should be spending more time so that you don't spend time building a lot of things that don't matter right and that is where uh, once that is there then you you basically look at how do you, what are the variants of solutions or solutions that you would do to that meet that need and how can you quickly validate by talking to users by showing these prototypes to your target audience and getting feedback will it work or not right so this can be done in a very lean or a agile way rather than kind of doing a month long research planning and doing a lot of things around that it's more about i quickly iterating learning and going through that problem framing reframing cycle in the current context so then that so now if if, if problem framing was important before panamera or uh, before uh, pandemic now it is even more relevant because now you need to understand the whole context you need to learn unlearn a lot of things that you know about the user pre pandemic and then learn a lot of the user behavior while you are doing this and then in that how do you measure that this is something that will be more successful than what other other opportunities and then finally how do you kind of look at uh, building and scaling this from uh, from a problem opportunity hypothesis point of view to what what do you want out of the uh, things so once you have done a lot of work on the problem framing this becomes simple and it goes uh, goes into the market quickly and helps you iterating the concepts really quickly and hence you are better in a better frame of mind to be able to kind of think about hypothesis validate them and go into the market with that and this is what i've seen across industry i think uh, when when i look at the various problems that that uh, different people are facing different industries are facing and different stresses that are uh, that are there uh, people have actually done these initiatives really quickly to be able to respond to that so that your your short term is addressed now with this your medium term analysis of behavior could be done so that you can kind of re reconfigure your where you want to go and then shape your vision into a longer term so when when you look at the problems the one is like for example contact while tra uh, transacting leads to spreading of virus so this is a big problem in in the users mind so i think that that is where like the physical proximity is reduced by like for example somato is doing contactless delivery they have disabled cod and these these are some of the like, high level initiatives there are a lot of initiatives that all the different companies are doing right now so this is just pick and choose of some of the things that i kind of uh, uh, saw when while i was preparing for this and for example i talked about olx doing a sanitization as a service right it get what what it, what are we doing we are giving control back to the user right so you are in control uh, your the the amount of risk that you have while interacting with our product our our technology our process is very minimal right and the second is for example uh, partners and users have the stress, stress of unknown right so again that is where uh, a lot of i, I think you, you over here as well 
this is this is a very sad part of it that uh, a lot of our products are actually process driven and, and uh, the, the the impact is on people who are kind of delivering those food packets or uh, delivering those uh, packages from a point a to point b so for example swiggy has done this hungry uh, savior covid relief fund phone pay has also done hospital uh, insurance policy right so again how do you emotionally make it more more safe right and uh, what we have also uh, in, in even in olx i think uh, they, there were a couple of programs wherein uh, we also donated a lot of uh, money to to our partners in olx people wherein uh, the gray collar jobs where who were not being uh, employed by the people so we we we've also done a lot of that so the key point of there is can you elevate the whole stress over there the third of course is loss of business uh, or loss of income so again financing the dealers for example ola is doing the sahyog uh, internet interest free micro credit program so all this is like immediate relief but it also opens up an opportunity for people to go deeper as as the situation eases and of course there is a mental stress due to confinement again airbnb is a great example right uh, who would have thought that in this current situation how can how can your brand be more relevant even now so the aspiration of a user is that i want to travel right but i can't so meeting that need with online experiences this is a great distraction but a distraction that enables you to bounce back really well when the situation gets back to normal so like now when you look at this and now you reflect to the whole presentation we are talking about different kinds of problems that different kinds of stresses that are there the physical emotional mental and people are trying to give reduce uh, remove them by either giving control or elevating or basically distracting and these initiatives gives you the short term of what can be done now to be able to be be with the user be a brand that stands with the user but also open up opportunities while we experiment to do that with the uh, with the medium term and the longer term and also while doing this how can we more be more agile so that we can take up problem opportunity hypothesis that are very relevant and you can you can be more successful in doing the right thing for our users and bringing it all together i think one is of course address this this kind of different kind of stresses that you see with your product experiences and the key message over here is can what can we do to be more agile to be more fast in converting this opportunity situation into an opportunity and in order to do that the main thing is how do you frame or reframe problem and reframe your vision while keeping it really simple for the end user for yourself so that you don't get into that analysis paralysis kind of a paradigm so that was it from my side uh, open to questions so are there any questions that i can answer so feel free to ask uh, any, anything that that is bothering you anything in your company or your industry that that is bothering you or anything that i can help you with you can reach out to shreya and uh, and she can redirect those questions to me i can answer them one on one but in case you want to ask that in a public forum yes i can uh, i can answer them right now
okay so so lakshmi asks uh, that as there are a lot of layoffs and as you mentioned that we should be open for opportunities so what does this impact the figure figure of employment unemployment in the current scenario so i think uh, uh, there are two things over here right like one is uh, unemployment yes uh, that 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 has happened uh, there are a lot of companies who have laid off unfortunately but also i think even in this para in these difficult times people are hiring right so that is one way of looking at it but also i think this is also a opportunity for us to self reflect to understand uh, where we are what is it that we need to upskill and how how do we kind of go to the next level while we are going for the interviews so that is one part of it right so one is that upskilling yourself to be able to na navigate through this situation the other is that why why what stops you from creating your own startup right what what stops you from uh, understanding these situations creating an opportunity for yourself and others right so so think from problem opportunity assessment point of view what are the problems what are the opportunities that you think are interesting right and do you really believe in that that is something that will change change a lot of realities for a lot of people then of course go ahead and maybe do an entrepreneurial stretch because i've seen that i think in these situations uh, there are a lot of people who are trying to do a lot of things uh, in startups and being able to kind of get traction is really really simple because now people are stressed out and any solution that really solves a problem will get traction right so so why not leverage that to be to to dream bigger to do something that really brings a lot of impact to the users cool uh, jagdeep uh, we have uh, ravish uh, he has asked uh, you mentioned the startup way in solving and experimenting uh, but will that not realign the complete product strategy so yes so again it depends right it, it depends on your validation so in in maybe uh, if there is a specific example i can maybe help you out but to be honest uh, like for example if you are already doing a lot of digital if you are already doing a lot of uh, solving customer pain points without contact without a lot of contact between users right then you are already set right you are already set in that circumstance and you you would probably be doing better in this uh, in this current situation but if there are realities that are impacting that whole paradigm then realigning the product strategy may be a good option for you right so again it depends on where in the product cycle you are what are the kind of problems you are trying to solve and and what is it that you can do uh, to basically remove that all kind of stresses in the in the user's mind and then does that mean realignment of the whole product strategy if it is yes then take a conscious call and kind of educate other stakeholders and get them on board that to be more successful this is these are the five set of things that we need to happen and by the way that also changes the overall product strategy so i think this is a time wherein you can play you uh, this this has a risk but this also has a reward with it because now you will be more relevant in the current in the new circumstances uh we have one more question from lakshmi uh she asks most of the companies uh, have shifted their products portfolio and they have problems of liquidation of their earlier product categories what should be the strategy next um so again when you, when you think about liquidation and problems that are currently there right so again what what i would do over there if i were in that situation i would uh, basically start investing in experiments in other categories where i think there is traction right learn more about it and then start to see that what is it that i can leverage in the already existing categories and can i move move things what are so again what is your power right your power is that you have been working in a certain product category or a space right you've learned a lot about thing lot about these things in that particular space others in some other product product categories may have not done the same things right 
So your claim to fame over here is can you leverage whatever you learned in your previous category into this new category and try to solve the user problems with that. Maybe that is something that people have not thought through in this category and may give you a niche in which you can pivot on. So that's the overall thing. But in addition to that, I think uh, one, you need to understand why is it that these categories are failing in the first place, right? Why, why is it, what is it that you can do to, uh, to prevent that failure, right? Uh, I, I think I can answer this course question more clearly if I, if I knew the context of what we are talking about. But overall, I think one, try to understand why that failure, try to see if that can be revived in some other shape or form by removing all those stresses. The second is, can you leverage the learning that you have in this space into some other space where, where this is something, this would be a novelty, right? This would be your your niche in that category. So so those are two, two or three things that I would typically do. Thanks, Rajiv. We have the next question from Abhijit. When we look at product market fit, there are organizations like MMT uh, who spend uh, a good timing to understand uh, the industry. Is the pandemic going to make those off track and pushing uh, service industry too? Uh, I, I think he's just asking whether uh, this pandemic is going to take away the product market fit they haven't, then they have to move to whatever they can. Yeah, no, I I think uh, they, there there comes that whole brain as a neuro neuroplastic thing, right? What are the behaviors that will change? What are the behaviors that will not change, right? It is so human mind. Human mind is like very visual, right? We want to travel a lot. We want to see the world. So irrespective, right? Irrespective of how how much time it takes, this is one behavior that I don't see changing anytime soon until unless like it is a catastrophe that you you actually actually can't even get out of the house for the next 10 15 years then probably this this will this will take a lot of time to reflect but tomorrow tomorrow if you come to know that there is no covid the first thing i think the first thing that gets filled are the airports right so so there is so again it, it's about understanding what are the behaviors that you should be going after so in this case, like for example, MMT, I think uh, they are trying a lot of things, but uh, their core is travel, right? So again, can can they do more on this to be able to relate to the customer, empathy, empathize with the customers being stuck at places? That is what Airbnb is, by the way, doing right now. So can can they do similar exercises so that it adds value to the overall relationship between the brand and the customer? Right. And it's very hard to change the behavior that took 25, 30 years for you to learn and yes. some months to, you know, reset. Yes. So until, until right. yeah. it is 10 years, 10, 15 years. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have next up from Web Khandelwal. And he says, uh, in the current situation where products, companies are having ex existential crisis, how can prioritization be done considering both one, a product or a company's existence? and to uh, maintaining market or the consumers so i, I think uh, that, that's a very good question right uh, because what happens is uh, a lot of times uh, maintaining customers is also very costly right again you you have done a lot to kind of acquire the customer acquisition cost is very high and once you have acquired you want to kind of retain it and ma maintain that uh, that customer base and uh, the company's existence is also about relevance, right? So again, it's a tight rope, no doubt. But uh, in my mind, if you're solving the right problem, if you're solving the problems for the customers, uh, then you will be relevant, and hence you will be. They will be coming back to you. Is is that in a short term? If they are not coming, will they never come? Uh, at least from my experience of how I'm looking at numbers right, uh, right now, I've seen that people bounce back really, really well. So I think. Uh, uh, things get back to normal once uh, once those stresses go away. Uh, so, from a company's existence point of view, uh, I, I think uh, this is a time wherein you you have to be very prudent of your costs, right? And uh, that is where the main lever is. Can you reduce your cost? And reducing cost doesn't mean laying off people. 
it also means operational and processes cost can that be lowered so that you can offer some of the services that are really relevant uh, in the current scheme of things and also make the uh, make sure that the ball is rolling and once things got get back to normal i think uh, even, even the unlocks have worked really well in getting back the customers what, what they were previously so yeah, maybe wait for those opportunities wait out those opportunities and then uh, either you you do on the, the the things that we talked about wherein you are solving some customer pain point in this time and then building on top of it with 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 your product experiences when we come out of it so there is light at the end of the tunnel so that's the main message over here so just hold on over there right uh we don't have any more questions thanks a lot jaji that was a lovely talk and uh, those were a great sequence of questions uh over to you share cool thanks rof someone's behavior using a product if we are changing uh, their uh, buying patterns or we are uh, you know trying to um, help them uh, uh, change their triggers so do you also think that uh, we also need to keep in mind uh, what all uh, patterns and what all changes we need to um, you know keep and what all things we need to let go once the situation starts to you know uh get back to the old normal like we say when when covid was not there uh, uh yeah could you repeat i think uh, uh, some part of the question was missed because uh, you were coming on uh, can you repeat sure sure uh, could you please repeat the question i didn't hear it completely Ah, so I was asking, like you mentioned, the uh, forgetfulness loop as well. So, do you yeah. think we need to take into account uh, the behaviors and patterns that uh, we as product managers are influencing? Ah, so I was asking, like you mentioned, the uh, forgetfulness loop as well. So, do you think that we also need to uh, have a look in what we are changing, and then do we need to roll back once things start to go back to normal? yeah so i think uh, this is also a, a function of observation right i think uh, a lot of uh, right now there is a lot of chaos in the behavior in that how people are responding some of it will stick some of it will not stick right what you'll observe is that as you as you come out of the situation uh, there are certain behaviors that are with that become relevant right for example more of digital than the physical right people are more comfortable with that it accelerates a lot of things in that paradigm and hence uh, you would want to double down on those initiatives right but uh, will 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 uh, something like more uh, for example uh, uh, sanitize uh, sanitization as a service will will it be relevant all along maybe not right so i think you have to observe how what organically you will see certain behaviors that are more prevalent and some of the behaviors that die down as as people come out of this of this covid situation so that is more of an observation because otherwise it is a more of a gut thinking right like this behavior will work this behavior will not work but that's not what we product managers do we we, we want to kind of observe it and then kind of see where where things are going does that answer your question Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, 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 it does. Cool. Mm, guys, we um, have five more minutes. So if you guys have any questions, so you can post it up. Yes, 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 it does. Cool. So guys, we 
guys, we um, have five more minutes. So if you guys have any questions, we can ask them. So there, there is a question from Vaibhav. So he's basically he's asking that does it mean that there may or will be substantial shift in at least the short term product planning and uh, roadmap? So I think what what it, it depends. What is your okay? So uh, Vaibhav has a question. Does this mean there may be a substantial shift at least in the short term product planning and roadmap? Yeah. So uh, as I was saying, I think this is where uh, it depends on your North Star. Right? Is your North Star, th th this is where you want to go. And uh, over there, I I what are the what is the impact on the current situation, right? If things are normal for you, like, for example, if you are a grocery delivery, you, you are actually doing better than what you were doing pre-pandemic, -pre right? So you don't need to do any short term changes to that, right? Everything is fine. You are doing digital uh, booking. You are you are doing a contactless service. You are sorted, right? Nothing needs to needs to change. But if you are in say travel, if you are in hotel, if you are uh, uh, in other such places, right, where in the short term you hardly can product provide any services or products that that you you were current previously offering, that is where you need to have a real rethink of what is it in the short term that can be done. So that you can use whatever resources that you have to be able to start making those changes, so that there is more connect between you and the customer. The biggest pro the biggest side effect or the downside of this whole situation is that over a period of time you have done a lot of investment to build that recall. Right? Travel means MMT. This means that. Right? So so though all those verbs are are in human mind. Right? So in order to be relevant in uh, if you're not relevant in this situation, chances are in six months, three months time, people will start forgetting that recall gets lost. Right. So in, in order to reinforce that, enforce that uh, uh, recall, you will be able you should be able to do some you should be doing some things that are relevant for the customer that creates maintains that relationship until those situations get back to normal. So it, it actually depends from industry to industry, the the where you are in the product life cycle and what you're trying to do and what is it there? What is your North Star? Is it being impacted by your by, by COVID situation? Uh, Webhav, I think your uh, question is answered well. Uh, just in case you guys have any follow up questions, you can uh, send them along to me. And I think uh, we are just wrapping up the meetup. So thank you, Jasjeet, for uh, sharing this uh, knowledge with us in these trying times. Thank you for taking out the time. Uh, thanks for Dhruv for uh, helping us out with the uh, question and answers. Yeah. And, uh, and thank I would you everyone who has attended and uh, took such a uh, engaging uh, part in the Q and A section. I hope uh, you guys are taking uh, something out of this uh, meetup. So thank and, you all. Yeah, and I would also like to thank. And have a you. very nice weekend. Yeah. yeah, I would also like to thank you, Shreya and uh, Dhruv. I think uh, very well managed uh, event, and also like. And people for people like who want to still ask questions, have doubts, feel free to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I am active over there and I can help you out in whatever situations you are and whatever uh, I can do to kind of make this better for you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jazzy. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.